the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Welcome to They Think It's All Over with David and Jonathan as a batsman who's not only scored more test runs than anyone in history, but who's also given his name to the Border Medal, awarded every year for services to Australian cricket. David Gowers won it 11 times. <laughs> John Border. With Gary and Rory as one of the team captains from Nevermind the Buzzcocks, who spends most of his working life with a loud mouth to his right and a fat bloke straight ahead of him. So a nice change of angle then. Sean Hughes. <laughs> this is the last show in the series. It's an extra long special and the scores are dramatically poised. Gary's won three shows, David's won four shows. And several Malaysian bookmakers have won half a million pounds. <laughs> And with the Ashes about to start, we kick off the show with Sporting Bluff, David, Jonathan and Alan. It's Aussie leg spinner Shane Warne for you. How's it going to get? Is he sponsored by a baked bean manufacturer? Shane Warne is sponsored by a headgear manufacturer. That says hedgehog. <laughs> Shane Warne is sponsored by a brewery. So, which one? David's team. <laughs> Before we start, Alan, it's lovely to have you here. Is it true, I believe, very early in your career, because your mum had a shop, didn't she? She did, yes. And is it, it cool? I did a bit of research, and apparently one, one of your very first outings, she put a little sign up, she was so proud of her son, and of course you would be, wouldn't you? She put a little sign up saying, shop shut, son at crease. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> is that true, sorry, that I think that is true, actually. And you know, David has a similar story, because his mum had a shop, and she put a sign up said, shop Surely shut, not. son at crease, back in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It was all true apart from the shop, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> House of Fraser. <laughs> that was the shop that <laughs> And is it not true that you effectively, you more or less finished David's career, is that right? Yeah, I'm very proud of that, too. Yeah. <laughs> David was never good against Australians, were you, David? He was once bowled out by Kylie Minogue. <laughs> He gets very upset when you ask him about the time he was stumped by Jason Donovan, don't you? I asked him. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? He'd been advertising baked beans. No, is he, was he sponsored by a baked bean manufacturer, a headgear manufacturer, or a brewery? I'm going to have to explain to David what a baked bean is, because he's not. <laughs> you, know, you, know when, you know when your, your sous it, chef prepares do you, do you le haricot dans le, le, le Neapolitan juice? Yeah. That's baked beans. And you know when he brings you le, 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 le cod dans le, uh, le batteur uh, teriyaki? That's fish <laughs> fingers. <laughs> I will not advertise anything unless I agree wholeheartedly with the moral and ethical standpoint of that company. Yeah. And those landmines I did, they were not made by children. <laughs> <laughs> the only company that won't let me work for them for some reason is Wang Xerox, and I've no idea why. <laughs> I'm here for you if you need me. <laughs> they won't even answer my calls here. <laughs> so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Does cricket go on longer than this round? <laughs> just it up. They've got not, 40 minutes. Not generally in this country, no. <laughs> Can't be baseball caps then, are we? You've got uh, a lot of hats at home though, Roy, haven't you? That time I went round, I saw them all hanging in the hallway there. He's got a construction worker's hat, a red Indian hat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he must know. I mean, his colleague got It's got to be the baker. We've got no chance. It's got to be the baker. Yeah. Yeah. So, you think Sean was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yes, yeah, Sean was right about Shane. He is indeed sponsored by Australian bean company SPC, who have agreed to fly over tins of baked beans especially, as he is unable to stomach all that exotic British food. <laughs> Shane Warne eats six cans of beans a day. He used to eat eight, but the bales kept coming off at the non-strikers end. <laughs> Wisdom voted Shane Warne one of the five cricketers of the century alongside Bradman, Hobbs, Viv Richards and Gary Sobers. David Gow was only kept out of the top five by the 693 people above him. <laughs> see? Have my hands ready there. Do you see that? That's something to look out for. Gary, Rory and Sean, a couple of little scene goals for you. This line at uh, uh, the linesman who can only speak Russian and Turkish. And here comes Hurst. He's got some finger on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. 
Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over with Gary and Rory. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's just habit. Normally, we English are too modest to mention it, but David's team, what have you got to say about England's triumph from just 35 years ago? England only won the 1966 World Cup thanks to Sir Cliff Richard. England only won the 1966 World Cup thanks to Kenneth Clark. England only won the 1966 World Cup thanks to Prince Philip. So, was the person who won us the World Cup, Sir Cliff, Kenneth Clark, or Phil the Greek? No, it was... <laughs> <laughs> what age would Cliff have been in 66? He, he was coming out of the shadows in those days, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> How did Cliff claim responsibility? Did he moon at the Germans or something? <laughs> There's no way he would have. You did would. he f*** them all? <laughs> In an asexual way? <laughs> Gave them all a pet hedgehog? How many times have you got to say hedgehog to Apparently win this Apparently six. <laughs> I thought something was going on. What, have you got to say six times? No, I want to do it more subtle than that. In many ways, Gary, you are the sort of Cliff Richard of football, aren't you? What? Ageless. What? You've got a weird neck. <laughs> Did you have a nice Father's Day? I, the week lovely Father's I had a Day. lovely Father's Day, and you know, I think we should take this opportunity to thank our wives for making it, because really it's the wives that make the day so special. My wife made sure I had a lovely day, and I know that Mrs. L made sure you had a lovely day. She was telling me all about it. She said she let you have a big lie in, got the children up early, they made lovely cards for their father, then they took them out and gave them to him while you were still asleep. And I think <laughs> Uh, well, no, uh, what's the other one? Kenneth Clark? Uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Clark, Clark is yeah. interested in football, isn't he? Because he manages the Tory party football team. He does, he? Does, yeah. And Anne Widdicombe, I don't know if she's interested in football, but her nickname is Six Yard Box. <laughs> <laughs> that poor woman. <laughs> I, I think, think we know the answer, don't we? Kenneth Clark was taking the credit, mm. yeah. wasn't he? For yeah. yeah. shouting yeah. at the line. Well, well, so you think Dave was telling I the truth? Let's was. see if you're right. <laughs> <laughs> So David did indeed get it right. Kenneth Clark claims he was sitting just behind the Russian linesman when that controversial third goal was scored. He told The Guardian, I saw the linesman hesitate. Spotting the doubt, I shouted at him as loud as I could. My commander Russian is quite rudimentary, but it seemed to work. I played a crucial part in the victory. <laughs> Other crucial interventions that Ken Clark has made at major sporting events include shouting, pull the big stick at Steve Redgrave, run faster at Red Rum, and hang around the goal line jug ears at Gary Lineker. <laughs> A similar thing happened at Euro 2000 when Helmut Cole sat behind the England manager shouting, put Phil Neville on! <laughs> Amazingly, the young Michael Portillo was also at the 66 final, although he left after 20 minutes when he discovered that Roger Hunt was a player and not the half-time entertainment. <laughs> Anne Whittaker, meanwhile, floated gently over the stadium with Goodyear written on her arse. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. excuses round. David's team, it's back to the recent tour of Sri Lanka and a good excuse to show England scoring the winning runs in the third test. Charles Surya over the wicket. One to win. Charles gets to that. Could be it. This could be the winning run for England. Yes, it is indeed. Thorpe and Charles complete the single. That's two series wins in a row for England this winter. While that test series was going on, a local court ordered the arrest of Sri Lankan star Arjuna Ranatunga after a group of students claimed that he detained and assaulted them. What was the reason given? David's team. Well, well he was playing cricket. cricket, he was bored. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Alan was very, very exciting cricketer. Yeah, You've got a stadium named after you, haven't you, Alan? It's Alan Border Stadium. It's a cricket pitch. Um, There's a field. Field, yeah. There's and a yard Shane, stadium. Shane, Shane, Warne's, Shane Warne's got a cricket pitch named after the Oval, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ranatunga. Yes, Ranatunga. Is that really a name, yes. Ranatunga? What a oh, beautiful Ranatunga. name. It speaks to me of poetry and romance. In fact, I didn't know it was someone's name. I thought it was a popular phrase. My wife said it to me just this morning. She said, if you've got five minutes before you leave, love, can you run a tunga over me privates? And I thought... <laughs> <laughs> Ranatunga. Oh, oh, Ranatunga. Lovely name. Ranatunga. He's five foot eight and 15 stone. Mm -hmm. That's what we call in the trade an FLF. Fat little f***. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? <laughs> How tall are you? Five foot eight, fifteen yeah, stone. Yeah. <laughs> You're what we call in the trade a C. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Wasn't there something to do with the, these two? They were sort of outside his house or something. They mm -hmm. were annoying him. There was sort of too much noise, or um, they kicked his dogs, or mm -hmm. sort of shot him. Or no, 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 no. I'll, I'll tell you. No points for anyone. Astonishingly, Ranatonga is said to have done it because the students had accidentally hit a cricket ball into his garden, and one of them had dared to climb over the wall to try and retrieve it. Curiously, a small boy recently hit a cricket ball into David Gower's garden and climbed in to find it. RAF helicopter search teams are now sweeping the 300 miles <laughs> south of the duck pond. <laughs> Gary's team, it's Mr. <laughs> Steffi Graf for you, otherwise known as Andre Agassi, seen here against Sebastian Grosjean. Earlier this month, Agassi was strolling through his French Open quarter-final against Grosjean when he suddenly lost 17 out of 20 games and slumped to defeat. So, Gary's team, why did it all go wrong for Agassi? What? Was he distracted by um, Clinton sitting next to Steffi Graf sniffing a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> Grunting wasn't him, that was uh, Clinton shagging someone. <laughs> <laughs> Tennis is one of those games, and it's, I mean, cricket, okay, cricket is boring, but tennis is um, a game sort of for no, tarts, and tarts and poses and pens, isn't it? You play tennis, don't you? Yeah, you I love a bit of tennis, me. Yeah. Cool, I love a bit. I'm super fit, you know. What's your handicap? Oh, what? My handicap is, well, sometimes I've He talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played tennis, but I reckon I'll beat you. You big girl's blouse, you... <laughs> 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 oh, well, 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 I, I challenge, challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge you, sir. Tennis rackets at dawn. But I tell you what, to be fair, I'm telling you. To be fair, that's Fox's face. Go on. To be fair, so you don't get slowed down, you can tape them back. All right? Because otherwise. Did Clinton f a hedgehog? <laughs> yes. But I know somebody did. Do you have hedgehogs in Australia? We have hedgehogs, yes. How many, how many do you have? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to win a six. lot of money here. <laughs> Name them. Six. 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 I just got back from Australia. Six. Like it? Yeah, I love it over there, because they say there's no culture, but I went to the uh, art gallery and some of those paintings have dried. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! It, was a shock I think it must have been oh, to do with Clinton, was it? Yeah. Well, no, he, Clinton was keep, kept coming in and going out, yeah, didn't he? Right, and yeah. every time Clinton came in, he lost a game. When he went out, he started winning again. Yeah, yeah. absolutely correct for three points. Thank yeah. God for that. Yes, well done, three points. The person to blame for the defeat was, of course, Bill Clinton, whose arrival as a spectator coincided with Agassiz's dramatic decline. A similar thing happened to Tim Henman at last year's Wimbledon. He was looking terrific on centre court until Andre Agassi turned up and started playing against him. <laughs> In Monaco last year, Andre Agassi was awarded one of the first ever sporting Oscars. He won it for best part in a German tennis player. <laughs> oh, take your time, come on. <laughs> Agassi is one of the few players who's equally comfortable on grass or clay. President Clinton is comfortable on grass, clay, lino, carpet, leather car seat, or on the kitchen table. And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have six. It's what's going on now. David's team, cast your eyes over this. So what was going on there, David's team? Is it uh, Dale Winton's goal of the season? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, Nick, you could help me out there, but I think I recognise that. Is that Stoke playing at home? No, that's no? not Stoke. Are <laughs> <laughs> you asking? Yeah, very well. Is it the only footage of Jonathan doing PE at school? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know I was quite a good sports person. Actually, my personal trainer is in the audience tonight. Really? Oh, we don't work out a lot. He comes around, we have a chat, a cup of tea. <laughs> That was um, Gary Lineker's testimonial match. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Elliot turned up for you, didn't he? <laughs> what did you <laughs> Elliot? You know what? I take umbrage to that clip, and I'll tell you for why. Yeah. You know what I resent about this programme, ladies and gentlemen? It's the growing, swelling tide of homophobia that I'm forced to endure sitting next to these people every week. Week in, week out. We've heard on the show. I'm down with the gay brother and sister, and I am deeply offended. That's right by the homophobic nonsense that you fellas spout every week. 
when we all know the reason for it is that almost all sportsmen are actually just themselves gay and unable to come to terms with it. Why would you stand there dressed in your slightly flamboyant white clothing? <laughs> a box to enhance your private parts for your fellow player. Holding a large stick, which us Freudians refer to as the cock staff. <laughs> Look at the language of the game. There's the crease. There's the man showing you the finger. What's it all about? This is just a smoke screen. Dude. What? <laughs> yeah. You fop, you cottaging dandy, you. Look at this horrible suit you're wearing. <laughs> Finish him! Can you sense the repressed anger? Because... <laughs> <laughs> You've sold the game of cricket to me for the first time, it's not boring at all. That's why people are watching. During the games, do you have chats? Do you know when you're waiting for the ball to come near you? Do you have <laughs> chats? Don't get technical, Yeah, song. yes, absolutely. But, like, just, what did you see on telly last night and stuff? Telly? <laughs> Television. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a ballet is it, dancer. Is it, yeah, is it something is to do it, with uh, studying ballet to help football? No, no, that's not the answer. I'm afraid I can't give you that. It looks to me from his positioning and the way he starts on the pitch and the way he cuts across, stumbles a little bit, that it's very reminiscent of Michael Owen's goal. Ooh, I will give you a bonus point. Well done. Yes. <laughs> you didn't say that. Now you said it was patrolling football. <laughs> That was Andy Harrett of the Scottish oh, yeah. Youth Dance Company who specialises in turning famous goals into yeah. ballet routines. That was, of course, Michael Owen's goal against Argentina during the 98 World Cup. And here's the real thing. This is Owen, taken in his stride. Chamot trying not to bring him down. It's still Michael Owen! He scored a wonderful goal! Howitt's first ballet was an adaptation of Archie Gemmell's spectacular goal for Scotland against Holland in the 78 World Cup. Scots fans recently voted that goal the best ever Scottish World Cup goal. Sorry, the only ever Scottish <laughs> World Cup goal. Howitt says he's now working on an entire ballet version of Scotland's campaign in the 1990 World Cup. It'll have a thrilling first act and then it'll be humiliated by a Costa Rican ballet troupe. <laughs> Gareth team, take a look at this. They race over a mile and a quarter, and as they race away, it was Grau Mano and Pinchincha and the freely racing Yarabu and the first to begin. Lugulis has been dropped out of the rear of the field, as they go through the first fill and a half, and Yarab has now come through to Grau. The King's Horse at the Derby. On the minus side, she didn't get the vote for women, but on the plus side, it did lead to the invention of what happened next. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have oh, ten. Oh, it's our handbags round now, all about disputes between rival sports stars. We want to know the roots of the bad feeling. David's team, yours involves a pair of near-legendary British Olympic gold medalists. And it's Dennis Mitchell and Fredericks and Twisty comes storming through. It's Lindford Christie. The time, 9.96. Oh, it's in trouble. And so gets the revenge he wants. Holding second is strong. Third is over. Fourth is Busser. And what a comeback for Sebastian Coe. That's Sebastian Coe and Lindford Christie. So why did they fall out, David's team? Sebastian Coe, he's in politics uh, now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. That might be yeah. something. Possibly. Well, he was. Is that what they've got in common? They're both responsible for a huge swing to the left. <laughs> hey! Hey! Have you ever had a, a row, a little tiff with a, a fellow player? Occasionally, yeah. Who would we be thinking of here? Can you name names? Oh. Both of them. Yeah, and what was that about? Do you need an excuse? <laughs> <laughs> We've finally got to talk a new buddy! <laughs> I don't think you're at any grounds to complain about butting here, John. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my Lord Hancock. That's all right. What about Boycott? I never any rows with him. You're unique. Boy, <laughs> you're the, you're the only oh, man anyway. in the cricketing world. You should have dressed up as a woman. Co <laughs> 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 and Christie. What could they be for now? But you must know. You hang out with What's these kind of people. Christian Co. Christian Co. Christian Co. Yeah. yeah. Hat makers. <laughs> oh, yeah, <that's> <laughs> David's delighted he could get that in. He's on the backhander from him. <laughs> You're working on Hedgehog, he's working on a hat maker. <laughs> Wasn't it like, code, didn't he accuse Christie? He shouldn't have been captain. He said he shouldn't have been captain of the England team because he was divisive or selfish or. I don't know, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, no, that's good. Guess. I'll give you the three points. Well done, well done David. We need the points. Good work.
Co appeared to start the feud by criticising Christie's captaincy of the British Olympic team, saying he was lucky to keep his silver medal in 88 after failing a drugs test, and accusing him of speaking jive in important meetings. <laughs> Since his positive drug test, Linford Christie has been incredibly careful to stay away from Nandrolone. He takes, I can't believe it's not Nandrolone instead. <laughs> In 1998, Linford Christie nearly had to retire with a serious toe injury. He had to step aside when he took his pants off. <laughs> Gary's team, your feud is between rivals from the two Manchester clubs, Roy Keane of United and Alf Inga Holland of City. Good ball back. And that's a nice touch. Holland! Keane's arriving. Here's Roy Keane. It's four. So, from what tiny acorns did the oak tree of their dispute grow? Is there anybody that Roy Keane hasn't had a feud with? Mm, not really. Can't be really, can they? Because he had once had a row with a speaking clock, you know. <laughs> That's not what you said ten seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Irish accent that no one in Ireland actually speaks. Yeah. Well, how's the Cork accent going? Uh, Cork God, is God a horrible us. accent. God love us, isn't it? God, Mr Higgert, he's still got her legs. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing there? I'm Irish. That's good. I like that one. <laughs> uh, no, he's from Cork, boy, and they talk a bit like that. Right. Exactly. You can't understand the words. That's just what I did. No, it wasn't. What? Oh, boys, boys, <laughs> boys, boys, boys. He just I love that song. <laughs> Sabrina, isn't it? <laughs> Let's hear Gary's Irish accent then. Come on, Gary, you do accents. Do no, it. No, I don't. <laughs> Because didn't Vinnie Jones bite your ear in Dublin? Vinnie Jones bit his ear in Dublin, but Gary was in Belfast yeah. at the time. <laughs> hey! There oh. you go. Uh, That's a worth waiting the whole series for. <laughs> you had a big fight with him, though, didn't you? No, they're joking, are you? <laughs> <laughs> the jellyfish argument. That's what, they're what was the jellyfish argument? Oh, he oh. said that Gary had as much backbone as a jellyfish. I stink. He was sued by some jellyfish, apparently. <laughs> 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 it's getting very musical now, come on. I ask you. So, no. What's the name of the other guy? Alf Inga Holland. Inga Holland. I think they've only put this in because you know that Gary has a huge collection of Alf Inga Holland jokes. Come on, Gary, give us 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Wait to hear this, it's fantastic. <laughs> Tell us a joke about Alf Inga Holland, go on. <laughs> Alf Inga Holland goes into a pub and the barman says, Why the long face? Play for Man City. <laughs> Another one, Gary, another one. <laughs> no, that'll do. <laughs> how many Alf Inga Hollands does it take to change a light bulb? Uh, I don't know. How many Alf Inga Hollands does it take to change a light bulb? Three. Oh. <laughs> here's one, here's one, Nick. I'll just get my normal electrician then, it'd be cheaper. One, one to change a light bulb and two to hold back Roy Keane. <laughs> okay, knock, knock. Who's there? Alf Inga Holland. I think a hole in who? I didn't know you could yodel. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! They were going there. What am I doing? <laughs> it goes back to that when um, Keane got injured by trying to foul. Trying to foul. It's Stop. correct for three points. I'll give you that. <laughs> yes. It all dates back to a Leeds Man United match four years ago when Keane viciously fouled Haaland but ended up rupturing his own cruciate ligaments, which kept him out of the game for a year. Haaland apparently stood over him and said, serves you jolly well right. Or oh, words to that effect. <laughs> Keane got his revenge in the recent Manchester derby, getting sent off for another appalling premeditated tackle. Before he left, he spoke the exact words the Norwegian had said to him all those years before. It's a case of tit for tit. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Premiership wouldn't let us show you footage of either Keane foul so to get our revenge we here at the BBC are refusing to show any premiership football for the next three years <laughs> show ya and at the end of that round David's team have six points and Gary's team have 13 Now for our regulars to prance around in the dark as we play Field the Sportsman. Right. David, Jonathan, <laughs> to your position. <laughs> well, David, you know what? I've got what? high hopes. I'll tell you for why. It's Wimbledon coming up. Yeah. They owe us a treat. Come Do you on. know where it is? Corner Cover's not playing at Wimbledon. You know why? She's going to be right here right now. Well. Are you dashing off straight off to Botland straight after the show? <laughs> no, I'm <working. laughs> 
Oh, Jesus, yeah. now, the Irish man is in the house. Hello. <laughs> West Indian Irish Oh, man. yes! Bizarre! It's the Blarney Stone Tatayam Tatayam. <laughs> I'm getting homesick. <laughs> What a thing to say. Oh, no, it's an Indian! <laughs> it's oh, a random... that's, not, that's very specific. That's a flower. That's it's a part of Southern... Pole to pole with Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK. OK, you can start your feeling now. <laughs> Is that That's you? you isn't it? Hello, how did you nice to see you? I recognise that index finger anywhere. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm going to get done next hey, week. What's going on there? Has he got down on you? <laughs> so, so, why do I so always have to go second, David, eh? Well, what's that going on? It's moving a little stand still for <laughs> sake. I've got that. What's all this stamping going on? I think I've got it. Okay, isn't it? Hell, wow, bloody hell. Hell, you what? Feel this over here. Please. Is it another crowd in here? Lindsay Davenport, feel that. <laughs> What's he wearing? He's wearing big baggy pants. What, what sort of. Oh. Barefoot! A barefoot person. Barefoot? What's he doing barefoot in here? Jesus. Oh, he's got like some sort of fungal condition <laughs> between his toes. <laughs> it's like a mushroom growing down there. Has it... he... he gone now? He's gone off somewhere. <laughs> Gone, he's behind me! <laughs> well, enjoy it. Enjoy while you can. Oh. It was. In fact, <laughs> it was. Andy Harris! Well done, you. Thank you. Andy Harris, yes. Well done. Thank you, Andy. We were at the top of that, we didn't know the time was running out. Gary, Rory, who was it? Andy, Andy Howitt, the guy who did the, uh, the Scottish... I even wrote his name down, so I thought he might be coming up late in the show. Oh, yeah. I think you should That's why you wrote his name down, was it? Yeah. <laughs> you have 90 seconds to work out who you're groping. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Yay! <laughs> and your time starts now. Well, it oh. sounded like there was about six or seven of them. Is it the Conservative Party? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Jonathan, I can still see your suit through this. <laughs> He's made that look his own, hasn't he? The <coughs> colourblind tosser. Just <laughs> <laughs> to get this one. Oh. It, what keeps having this? Is it rugby? Oh, I know. It's too, hey, it's too small for rugby. <laughs> <laughs> What's over Sit here? down in your chair. What, That's uh, not a rugby ball, it's too small for a rugby ball. Oh, feels like a rugby ball tomorrow, not that I would know. Mm, I think it's the cast of Prisoner's oh. Obligation. <laughs> 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 I'm very sorry, whoever that was. Gary gives ball to someone <laughs> else. <laughs> now, it's I've not... hurt my toe. <laughs> 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 Stop biting my arm. Who is it? Well, I don't know. It's rugby the, team. It, no, it's too small. The ball is a, a Australian what? rules football ball. <laughs> yeah, the British Lions are the rules team. Well done. Who is that? Is that right? Well done. Where did they get it? Well done. Well done. Well done. See if they'll be here after this. Well done. 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 Yes, that's the British Lions Aussie rules team who'll be playing Australia at Clapham Common this Sunday. I wonder who'll win that one. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have 16. playing the name game this week all the clues must be given in the form of impressions the leaders goes first which is Gary's <laughs> team I hope there's no Irish people in <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay there right. you go well, thanks, <laughs> as many names as you can in 90 seconds starting now 
Hey, referee, that was never a minute. Uh, I've got five more minutes to play. Oh, Alex Ferguson. <laughs> Hi, I, I'm, I, I can peel bananas with my feet and I win, I win, uh, I win ten at Wimbledon all the time. It's very boring. Sampras. Boring, yeah. Definitely a penalty. Woeful defending. Eyeliner. Oh, Alan yeah. Hansen. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful tie here at Edge Beston and that's a marvellous delivery. Trevor Brook. Richie Barrett. <laughs> well, um, it was a choice between being England football manager or playing for the Republic of Ireland. Tim so Henman. Correct. <laughs> Ben Joran Eriksson. So I see this referee, he's all cock. So I push him over and he fall over, he's sending me off. I'll uh, be candy. Can yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing a wet suit. <laughs> Jonathan Ross. <laughs> I, w I would dearly love it if Alex Ferguson didn't win the championship. And Kevin Keegan. <laughs> hey, watch out his belt. <laughs> watch out his belt, me and my sister being dags. William, Vince, we have to scary. Well, of course, you know, uh, we come second in everything, but we are technically the best team in the world ever. Awesome, Wenger. Twenty-one. <laughs> the game is in the bag. Yeah. You can say you were there when Jonathan got his twenty-one. Um, if you feel like invading the set now, <laughs> David, have a little bit of faith in me, will you? Just because you've been a loser all your life, we can be winners now. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Back us up a bit. No, no, no. Alec, Alec Stewart has been a great inspiration to me recently, and I'm prepared to concede now. <laughs> I am French and I've got such beautiful hair. Look at my lovely hair. <laughs> oh, it's in all oh, yes, it's in because all I'm it. worth it. That's right. Twenty to go. I'm a I'm a boxer and uh, I'm a little I'm a boxer and I gotta go too oh, and I like to eat on the ears and that's a nice ear. I'm gonna eat your ear. Hey, I'm a boxer. I beat Frank Bruno in round six. That's right. I'm not Tyson. What's the matter with you? That's right, Tyson. You need to go, isn't it? Focus! 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 I play football and I, I come right, like David back Yeah, there you go. It's easy. It's a spirit. I refuse to rise to the occasion. I will not be insulted by you. You are just a little... Cliff, is it back? back. Okay. Here's why you get this. For years I sat next to this fellow on my own show and I felt a love for him. <laughs> because we're no longer oh, yeah. hosting <laughs> Match of the Day together. Oh. And my name is... Gary. Mark Lawrence! <laughs> uh, I tell you, we've got to do well, something. We've got to up his dosage. <laughs> <laughs> but I know how close you two are. I'm it's not just really. a great footballer. I also know how to handle a video camera. I like to put it just down over there. Impressions, Jonathan, impressions. I don't know what he talks like. <laughs> I'll just pull the occasional video off him. I don't know what he speaks like. Hello, I'm a, I'm a York. cheeky little footballer, all right, mate. Dwight York, then. I've got a video. Yeah, Dwight York. Must have been good impersonation. Yeah. Yeah, okay, here's a good one. It's, 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 you get... I do this one very well. This might surprise you, but although I'm a three-time Grand National winner who's dead and buried at Aintree, I speak perfect English. <laughs> Somewhere out there, there's a filmmaker who's going to make a biopic of Mike Tyson. He's watching this, he says, I think we found our Mike Tyson. <laughs> we found him. Oh, Tyson. So, Gary's team well, are the Tyson winners, which that means Tyson. that the series score is tied at 4 all. <clears throat> it's tie-break time. Oh, to decide the series, we want Gary and David to sumo wrestle. Oh. <laughs> right, For you, Ross. <laughs> this will be no ordinary sumo wrestling. This is the sport of pseudo sumo. So, Gary and David, please come round to the front to put on your pseudo sumo suits. Take your shoes off, and these gentlemen will dress you, these gentlemen, ladies. <laughs> Got some shoes off? Yeah. Mind your toe, Gary. Oh, no. <laughs> I've already banged my toe. Well, I know, yeah. He's played this before. <laughs> yeah, Lineker, you, you must have done some of this in Japan. <laughs> I just don't you think, Jonathan, this is a vision of the future when they're both running pubs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you should play football! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh, 
You come near me with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember that night at Casualty. <laughs> well, he just reminds me of that scene in Animal Farm Volume 7 that you had. <laughs> remember that when the curl okay, came out? Okay, right. Unlike normal sumo, can you step out of the ring, please? You must have heard that before. Come, come on, on David. <laughs> first one to pin the other one to the floor will be the winner of the series, okay? <laughs> to the floor. Not, David, Jonathan and Alan, Gary, Rory and Sean, we're all off to watch England thrash Australia at cricket on video from 1928. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over, it is now. Nick and the boys back in the autumn, stand by for the boxer hitting out at the telly cooks. BBC One's in the ring with TV to go in just a tick. There's a special compilation of the best of They Think It's All Up.